I'd like to take a look at circuits where the voltage or the current might not be constant. In this video, I'd like to take a look in particular at AC current, or circuits where the current and hence the voltage are both dependent upon time in a sinusoidal way. In order to introduce this topic, let's take a look at a simple example consisting of an AC voltage source in parallel with a resistor. Because the resistor is just in parallel with the source, I can write the voltage across the resistor as just the voltage at the source. By the way, in AC circuits, we typically use lowercase letters to indicate those quantities that vary with respect to time, and we use uppercase letters to indicate those which are fixed and unchanging. The current through the resistor is just given by Ohm's law. Let's go ahead and plot these two waveforms, the voltage and the current. They're both sine waves, they're in phase with one another, and they have the same frequency. The maximum voltage is just Vm, and the maximum current is Vm over R, so I could define that as Im. There's something interesting about both of these curves that I'd like you to notice, and that is that the averages are zero. The average voltage is zero, the average current is zero. If you look carefully at the curve for voltage, it spends half of its time above the center line and it spends half of its time below the center line. The average voltage is just zero. Same thing with the current. You might recall that our formula for power is V times I. So if the average voltage is zero and the average current is zero, is the average power zero? No, 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 the average power is not zero, even though a naive application of the power law would suggest that that's the case. If you imagine a high voltage power transmission line, say at 50 kilovolt, it means 50 kilovolt AC or 50 kilovolt RMS, and I'll say in a moment what that means. But certainly the average voltage for any AC power transmission line is just zero. So although the average voltage is zero, it doesn't mean that the line is not dangerous. Let's graph the power that's burned up instantaneously in this resistor. The instantaneous power is just the voltage times the current. I can identify three points where the instantaneous power is zero. In the first half period, the voltage is positive. The current is positive, therefore the power is positive. In the second half period, the voltage is negative, but because the current is also negative and two negative numbers multiplied by one another give a positive number, the power is also positive. This is why the average power is not zero in this particular circuit. So the power being burned up in this resistor changes with time. There are some periods of time where the power burned up is exactly zero, but there are other times when the power is very high. So how hot does the resistor get? How much power on average does the resistor burn up? It's equivalent to asking the following question. What constant power applied to this resistor would cause the resistor to reach the same temperature on average as this time varying power? It's equivalent also to the following question. If I were to replace the sinusoidal source with a DC source, what voltage would that DC source have to have in order for the average power burned up in the resistor to be the same? Let's go ahead and calculate the average power. To calculate the average power, I have to define what it is that I mean. I see that because the power is periodic, I only really need to consider the first half period. Average just means sum over time, so I'm going to take the sum and divide it by the time. Sum in this case, because it's a curve, means the integral. So let's integrate this curve for the first half period and divide it by a half a period. The average power for that first half period should equal the average power for all of the half periods that come after it. I'm going to move my t over 2 up to the numerator. I'm going to pull out the vm squared over r from the integral. The integral is shown in the brackets, and it would have to be evaluated at the two limits. First, we'll evaluate it at the upper limit. Omega is 2 pi divided by the period. At the lower limit, zero, both of these terms are just zero. We get some cancellation in the numerator, but we end up with a sign of two pi, which is just zero. The period also cancels, which is interesting because it means ultimately that the frequency of the wave doesn't matter in the calculation of the power. Now that we know what the average power is, let's then answer the second question that I alluded to. If we were to replace that AC source by a DC voltage source, what voltage would it have to have 
in order to give the same average power. I've labeled that voltage VRMS because it turns out that the voltage which answers the question is the root mean square of the time varying voltage. Let's find the power in this simple AC circuit. I can call it the average power because in a DC circuit the instantaneous power is just always equal to the average power. If I set these two terms equal to one another, I can identify the RMS voltage as the maximum voltage of the AC signal divided by the square root of 2. In other words, if you have a sine wave and you know the amplitude of that sine wave in a circuit, then you can use Ohm's law in the ordinary way if you take the peak voltage or the amplitude of the voltage and divide it by the square root of 2. It turns out that the same thing is true with the current. If you know the time varying current or you know the amplitude of a sinusoidal current flowing through a resistor, then you can take that amplitude, divide it by the square root of 2, and then you can apply Ohm's law in the ordinary DC way. A DC source at the RMS voltage will cause a resistor to burn up an equal amount of power over time as an AC voltage source with an amplitude given by the RMS voltage times the square root of 2. This video is part of an organized sequence where I explore various AC and switching circuits. If you enjoyed it, then you might consider following the channel's playlist to learn more about these types of circuits.